Alright guys, due to popular request, I'm going to show you how to set up your own MySQL server on your local computer. I'll be using Windows 7 today, but uh, keep in mind this is pretty much a generic setup for any Windows device. So the first thing that we're going to do is we'll open up our favorite web browser and we'll drop out to um, Google and from there we'll go out to MySQL server download and it's this first result here now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll click on the Windows download and we'll go to MySQL installer and then from there we'll go to MySQL server from server we can scroll down a bit and they've got this big icon here for the uh, MySQL installer 5.7 so we'll go ahead and we'll download that and as you can see we've got uh, this page here which in this case we will pick the uh, Windows MSI installer the second one here and we'll go ahead and let that download we'll say no thanks unless you have an account or want to make one um, and in this case we'll keep it because we know what it is now for time's sake I've actually gone ahead and already downloaded it um, so we'll go ahead and just use that file for now. Now believe it or not, MySQL is pretty much as simple as installing any other program. Uh, we'll just double click on it. It should pop up here. And we'll run through it just like it was any other installer. Uh, we'll just have to set a couple of the configurations. and you will need to be an admin because this will install actually a MySQL service that will start every time the computer does uh, for this example we're going to go ahead and use a development environment or a, a debug environment they do have the option of a server but uh, for right now this is what we're using it for is for testing for learning how it works getting it set up and to be honest the uh, setup doesn't really change between the two of them so as you can see here, I already have a couple things installed. I have a connector for Python, for .NET, and I have some documentation installed. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Add. This will bring you to the screen that you guys probably see. So first we'll read through that, of course, accept, and hit Next. And here's where we get to select what we want. In this case, we want the MySQL server. And because we're allowed to have different versions and different sets, this is the version 5.7.9. Really doesn't matter what version it is. I'm going to go ahead and put the 64-bit uh, version on my computer here because I'm running 64. Um, and we're also going to select under Applications the MySQL Workbench. And for that one, I'll again go ahead and do the 64-bit. And what the workbench will allow us to do will basically just go back into our database once we've created it. Um, and that will allow us to run SQL code, do some visuals, and we'll show you a little bit there. Uh, for you guys, you can leave the installed directories at default. Um, because I've already installed this before, I have uh, that path already exists, but I'll hit next, and I'll hit next. Now here, it's asking us are just telling us what we're going to install and what the requirements are so we're going to go ahead and hit execute and we'll give that just a couple seconds to catch up here and I'll go ahead and, and agree and install now what this is is this is just getting all the requirements um, in this case it's the C++ redistributable packs uh, these are pretty common if you download any games or if you uh, run any programming through .NET, you've probably already installed this. And after that I can go ahead and hit next and here's the two products we're going to install, the MySQL Server and the MySQL Server Workbench. So we'll hit execute on that and it should take uh, anywhere from a couple of minutes to maybe five or ten if you have a slower computer. As you can see here we've already climbed up to 40 percent and we're gaining pretty quick. Once this is done installing and we have our workbench installed, I'll go ahead and I'll show you how to create a new database. And I won't actually create a table in the workbench, um, but you can see how to create a connection from Java 
a table from Java, select and insert data into the table from Java, all in my next videos in the series. Now what, again, the My MySQL Workbench basically does for us is it gives us a place where we can run SQL code um, and have it affect the server. There are a lot of different options out there. If you're doing more websites and web design, that type of thing, there's an outstanding program uh, called PHP My Admin. Tons of videos how to set that up. Uh, and that's what I personally use as a majority. There's also some paid programs such as MySQL Mastro, which I've enjoyed for the programming side of things. But uh, to get a good idea of how databases work and if you want to continue with it, um, the MySQL Workbench will work just fine. Most of our code manipulation or data manipulation, I should say, such as creating tables and saving information in them is all pretty much done in programming languages anyways, um, as that's where you actually need it. So that's the, the primary thing that I'll be focusing on in this video. I won't actually show you how to insert any data or take any out. I'll just show you how to get the database set up and the user accounts and explain a little bit about why we do what it is we do. So some of the notes that we can make uh, about this here is um, we are allowed to install multiple versions of MySQL, so you could have version 1, 2, 3, all the way up to whatever you would like, basically. Um, and we just have to put them on different ports. And you'll see what I'm talking about here in just a second as we continue. Uh, we can go ahead and tell it to configure that for us. And now this is what I was talking about for the port. As you can see here, mine is set to 3307 you want yours to be on uh, 3306. The reason mine is on 7 is because I actually already have MySQL, ins MySQL installed on 3306, but this port is basically how MySQL or what part MySQL will talk to your program with. Um, if you want to know, learn more about that, you can look up some IP and TCP protocol. So yours should be 3306, mine is going to be 3307. And we use the TCP slash IP and we want to open the firewall port for network access which basically just means that we'll be able to uh, talk back and forth through our network and we can leave everything else at default and hit next. Now we need to create a root password and what this is is this password will give you uh, with the account root, R-O-O-T, um, this password is basically how you'll manage your entire database. You do not want to forget or lose this, and you also don't want anyone getting a hold of this. Now it says my password weak, but it's really not. Um, you can at this point add another user if you'd like to, um, and I'll just show you real quick. They've got an option here for all hosts, which means anyone in the world could connect into it. And then they also have local host, which means just your computer can talk to it. So if you were going to make a full-fledged admin account that has access over everything, then you'd want that probably to be set to local host for security. However, if you're giving the user access over just one database, we might say um, any host so they can get to it from anywhere. Now I'm actually going to cancel out of this instead of creating a new user because I'll show you how to create a new user for each table as we go. Now we want to leave both of these boxes checked and the standard system account because this is how the service will run. So when we start our computer, MySQL database will automatically start because of this. So we'll go ahead and hit next on that. And here's all the different things that it's going to do. It's going to run through and test so we can hit execute. Now, the longest one of this will probably be updating the firewall um, that might get hung up there for just a second or two. And depending on the firewall you're using, you might have to allow this program to run. After that, we'll pretty much jump right into the starting of the server. And right now, we have a running MySQL server. So now that the configurations are complete, we can hit Next. And we can go ahead and actually start the MySQL workbench after the setup. So we'll hit Finish here. And we'll give it just a couple minutes to load. My computer is not the snappiest per se. And we can go ahead and this is just the catalogs. Uh, 
we can update them. It doesn't take more than a few seconds and hit next. And we don't have any change logs as this is the first time we've installed it. And now you can see all of our new stuff and here's our workbench opening up. And up here where it has the MySQL connections, we'll hit add. And I'll switch my port number. Yours can stay the same. We have the proper root account here. And we'll go ahead and hit OK. And we need a proper name. So I guess we could call this uh, video one and go ahead and hit OK on that. And here it is. So I can double click on this and it will open up my SQL editor and ask for my password. This is the password you made for your root account. So it will be whatever you typed in in that last screen. Now that I've typed that in, we can load right up here. And where this says query one, this is where we can actually start writing MySQL code. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll go ahead and create a table and I'm just going to call it demo. So the command for that will be as follows. Create database, database name, which in this case is demo. And then we can actually go ahead and run this. Now to run it, we have this little flash icon here, which if we hover over it, it will tell us execute the selected portion of the script or everything if there is no selection. So we'll run that. And as you can see at the bottom there, uh, we created the table demo. Now there is one more thing that we want to do. We could just use our root account to send over all of the information, but if someone were to be able to break into that root account, then they would have access to all of our databases. So what we normally do is leave the root account on a local host only, so they have to be on the physical server to be able to uh, get root access. And then what we do is we create users per table. So what we, how we do that is we can say grant all privileges on, and then the database name, which in our case we called it demo, to, and then we create our new user. So I'm going to go ahead and create one named Steve at localhost, and I'll go ahead and identify by and then this is where we put in the password so for now I'll just say all uppercase password we'll go ahead and we'll run this code and there we have it now we had uh, an error here that came up that was no database selected select the default database you would used by double clicking its name in the schemes list in the sidebar so what that's basically telling me is I have to jump back over here and I'll go ahead and actually uh, refresh all so there's our demo database and now I'll select this so I'll set to the default data scheme and now we have a nice user created here now it does give me the warning that this command is depreciated which means that in later versions they might remove it and that's why we installed documentation so we can go back later and find out what they're going to replace it with and what they want um, for now this is going to work just fine now that you've done this this uh, Steve at localhost account right here that is uh, what you'll use to log into on your next video with the Java that will be your username will be the Steve and it will only work on your local host. You could also set that to any host. And it will be whatever's in the password. In this case, my connection string would be the username Steve, and it would be the password of all capital password. This is all it takes to set up a working database. From here, you can create tables, insert data, select data, and do all sorts of different things through the programming code itself, such as something in Java or C Sharp or Python. This is the general server setup and how you do it. Again, it's real simple um, and it works great. Uh, you can also do quite a bit with this MySQL workbench. I personally don't use it very often, but uh, it is a nice tool to have and it's easy to get.